blue acid. Uh, there's everything you want in here, including a lot of work. <coughs> this is a beautiful fountain. It's called Broken Crystal. It, uh, it illuminates at night. You can't see the light now. And uh, this fountain head spins in a way that it produces what look like broken pieces of crystal glass. Now, uh, well, you can see uh, what we have. And now uh, we're going to concentrate today on putting in, isn't it a beautiful little road? Putting in late bloomers. You know, like me. My wife says I was a late bloomer. These are uh, perennials that will do their thing in uh, beginning in September, October, and then into the freezing. Now this fella here is called a candy lily. I'm going to put them over here in a, in a spot that needs a little filling in. This will grow to about uh, three feet. Even though they uh, call it a lily, it's a member of the Irish family. If you don't have a candy lily, get one. Multitude of colors. It even has polka dots. Now this fella here is called, uh, I can't pronounce these names, Azurus. And it is a aster. Now we're gonna, this guy is gonna grow pretty tall, so we're gonna put him back uh, right about here. And uh, some of this stuff will have to be cleared out, but not by me. And uh, we're a little crowded, but uh, we'll work it out. Now I'm going over and get some more plants. Incidentally, if you want to pay a slight premium and get any plant that's in existence, go to Planter's Palette in Winfield, just west of uh, Wheaton. And it's a fabulous place. Well, now, describe the rest of your flowers here, Dad. Oh, flowers? Over here, that's what you wanted to for. You know, for. the problem with describing flowers is sometimes you lose the, uh, the identification tag. The people ask me, what is that? And I say, I don't know. It's a flower. Now this here, <laughs> I can tell you this, this is a Flowers 101. This is a weed. It'll come out. Uh, we just cut down all of our oriental poppies, which are tremendous. This is a corn flower. It, it's not blooming yet. This is a marvelous, a marvelous fountain, and the birds love it. They, Giant bomb in, take their bath and sing. This is a very unusual uh, species of uh, rose bush. It's called a parfait. And it has many, many colors, as you can see. <coughs> Over here is a form of a true lily, a little short guy. There, I think, is one of the great perennials of all time. That is a moonbeam from the Coriopus family. I hope I pronounced it right. That will bloom from June till the frost. You don't have to pluck it. You don't have to take dead leaves off. It just keeps going and going. Now it's, it's just starting to flower. When it's at its peak, <laughs> there over there, we'll show you when it is peak. It's fantastic. These are some uh, silver leaves that have grown a little less. There are some. Uh, that is <coughs> two poppies that are true uh, flowering. Oh, here's one. It's still left. It won't give up. These, of course, are day lilies, are various species. Uh, this is a wonderful assortment. It's sort of a ground color, but as you can see, it has 
white, it has purple, it has lavender. And I almost tore it out one year because I thought it was nothing but weeds. But it is, it's a flat, thriving perennial. Excuse me. Then we get up here, and uh, I think fantastic here. Daisies. This is a beautiful Tropicana. This is a, a Floribunda. Many small flowers. These are true. Uh, <coughs> these came over from France, and they are a true rose bush and a tremendous, I, I think the French get all their perfume from these plants. Very hardy, you cut them down about uh, four times a year, and uh, they're terrific. They, they have a broad, as you can see, this is just two plants. They will go on all summer until the freeze. Flowers, flowers, flowers. Just like Dr. Ramsey, he always has a near-term, a mid-term, and a long-term solution. These are long-term. Uh, let's see, what else? Well, this <coughs> here's another Iridora. That's a uh, lovely true lily. These are irises that have uh, retired. Rosa Sharon's back there, but they're... Uh, they're not ready for blooming yet. And let's see. This is a Tropicana rose. Or they're looking. And of course, those are tiger lilies. <coughs> Another lily. And uh, in that flower phase are the sentimental signs of Betty and myself. That's Pepper von Braunschweiger who died after 13 years with us, and uh, we had to put him to sleep. And there was no way he was gonna wind up in the ash can. So we had him cremated, put in a little uh, lead box, and he's there, surrounded by his favorite flowers. What you describe, we do have a lot of uh, annuals here, <coughs> and these are uh, some uh, things that I picked up uh, yesterday at the Planter's Palette. Now incidentally, this is very interesting. <clears throat> if you like phlox, you must remember that the one problem with phlox is they develop a sort of disease after they've, you know, been in bloom, and it's sort of a whitish, milky uh, <clears throat> covering that gets on the, uh, on the plants and the flowers. They finally developed two types of phlox that are resistant to this white, milky, moldy looking junk that gets on the leaves. So this is the first year for us, and we're going to give them a try. Let's see, what are these? This is a, uh, this is also a little uh, phlox of type. And the last one that's going in is called Audrey, a multicolored aster. And now, <laughs> oh, this is, <laughs> these are our vincas that we're going to put in this afternoon. Or at least I hope Betty's going to put them in. And uh, that's about it. Along the fence, we've got uh, annuals, and then we've got the lupus, the purple one, and tiger lilies and a lot of things that are still waiting to uh, come out and do that thing. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, I'm very much of an amateur, but we do love the beautiful color and the flowers. Thank you, John.